Hello. Going to talk a little bit today about working with goose shoulder and some goose feathers here, specifically working with um, these to do what are called married and or matched wings. I did a fly called the Martin a while back, which used some goose shoulder in it. It was yellow and black for the tail. And a follower reached out to me and asked, he said he'd be interested in some additional information as to how the tail was set up in that fly. So I thought it would be a great idea. I'll go ahead and show you some goose shoulder here, how I process it, how I cut these and manage those, as well as these are goose flight feathers, goose quills. I have another video on working with duck quills and managing those, and I'll refer you to that because it talks about setting them up and, and actually taping them together like this. These, I just don't have taped right at the moment. I'm gonna go ahead and process this goose shoulder here and then show you how I go about marrying those up. Now the goose shoulder, usually when you get them, this is a white backdrop and these are white. I'm sorry if it doesn't show up that well, but you're gonna get you know, four or five goose shoulders like this inside of a package. Here's red, that'll show up a little bit better. As you can see, there are different sizes, different characteristics in each one of them. But some of the common things are just the fact that you're not going to use these this fluff right here. You can if you you know develop a fly or, or want to try, but I generally do not use these. So I'm first thing just going to reach up and peel off this fluff. I try to keep the the feather even at the base so that both are even here. I don't want it riding too far up that way on one side or the other. I want to try and keep it even. Now this is the other thing to consider is that I have some barbs here that these, the, um, the ends of them are just a little bit, I don't want to say frayed, but they're too skinny. There's just not much to them. So I'm going to peel those out as well as these here. And then looking at the other side of the feather, you'll see I still have some of these here that are the same way. So I'm going to reach up here where those um, are really still kind of skinny. They're just not going to give me, they're okay if you up here, like if you wanted to use those for fishing, but I'm going to peel those out. I get a little off like this, it, it, that's fine with me. Here's the thing to consider with these goose shoulders though. When you're using goose quills like this, you have a left and a right. So these are actual flight feathers right here that are, are on their wings like this. There's a left and a right. Now in terms of tying, at least when I'm using these, I always put them with the shiny side facing me and the dull side facing away. I always reference when I have them together, this is the left and that's the right, okay? That's very important when you're matching these up simply because if you're wanting to have, if I can show this here, if you're wanting to have the concave side out this way on both of them, then you wanna make certain that you're matching the shiny sides like this so that you have both of the concave sides outward. However, if you don't, if you want them to flatten, you're gonna do the opposite. But mostly it's very important when you are going to marry some uh, feathers together. And the reason for that is that all of these barbs right here have barbules on them. Barbules are basically kind of like a Velcro system. Uh, on, on one barb here, it's got barbules that are kind of like this, and on the other one, they're the exact opposite. And what they do is they hook together, and that's what keeps the feather t together. As you can see right here, I've got some that got separated. If you stroke those and just work those a little bit, you can get all of those back together. To just zip them right up. Now, that's, this is great for the bird because air doesn't go through. They can get lift and they can fly. For us as tires, it's very important because if I am going to 
make a multicolored uh, wing. Uh, say I want to do a red and a white like I, I did in the Ibis and white recently. I, want, I have to make certain I'm taking barbs from the left and matching them up with uh, white barbs from the left. If I try to put the white barbs on the right to the red barbs on the left, they won't hook up right and it doesn't work. The thing with the goose shoulder is though, you don't necessarily have a, you have a right and left side of one feather, but I don't have a right and left in regards to, I have to have two feathers so that I have a left and I have a right. I can get the right and left barbs that I need off of this for tailing. And even for like some Atlantic salmon flies uh, that you, where you need longer barbs, you can get those off of one feather. So it's a little bit different when you're dealing with the goose shoulder than when you're dealing like with the goose quills. So referencing the ibis and white that I did uh, a while back, I'm going to show you, here's my process for cutting these out and marrying all of these together. Keeping in mind that in the ibis and white, it is red on top of white. So it's the white that I'm going to process first and then the red. Because on that fly, I was using a much larger hook. I, was, I clipped out four to five barbs on that. I'm going to actually clip out a little bit more just so that you can pick it up a little bit on the, uh, on the camera a little bit more. Now I go in and I cut the four or five barbs that I want out on both sides first. And then I do the same thing to the red. Trying to make certain I keep this down in the frame. As you can see, hopefully you can see enough detail. I can get my scissors right in and pretty much count whether it's four or five or six barbs that I'm cutting out right there. Make certain I got those out. Now, doesn't matter really whether you start with, if you're looking down on the tail on the fly and you've got your, your goose going out like this, doesn't matter if you start with this one or with that one. I find it to be more personal preference. What really does matter is that, notice I'm looking at these feathers with their concave side, shiny side facing me, okay? That means I have the left, left, right, and right. So I have to make certain that if I'm, because the red goes on the white first, I'm gonna take the white off here. I set that down, still concave side up. And then, and notice now it's, it's also curving out towards me. Then I pick up my red feather, keeping it concave side up. I'm gonna match the tip up here and pull that off, but I'm pulling it off from the left side of the feather just like I did that. Now, when I touch those together, they zip right up. Now this, the, the red is a little bit short on this. I would probably split that apart and reposition it, but for purposes of this video, that's good. So you can see I've got the red and the white in there. The ends, sometimes, like I said, if those are kind of uh, ragged or just thin on the ends, they don't zip up as well. As a fishing fly, I don't think it's going to matter. So now I have what would be the left side slip for my tail already processed. I'll set that down. Now I'm going to do the right side. But for me, at least, I like to do this where I'm always holding the material in my left hand. And then my right hand is the one that is switching material around. Now, this way, if I kept the feather this way, I'd have to peel this out here, pick this up and put it in there and peel it. I'm just used to doing it uh, with my left hand. So I flip the feather over. Notice that when I lay it down, I flip it back over. It's important that you always know the orientation and are aware of the orientation of your feathers so that you're getting the correct side to then zip up with the other piece. So I'm flipping this over. I'm getting my tips even here. 
peeling the red off and flipping this back over so I know both of them are concave side up. And then all you really have to do is touch these together like this. Oop. Now, see, I stroken that out. I pulled just a little out. Nothing to be worried about. Make certain you're matching up the curve. And I can put that right on top. And I can even get that one barb just zipped right back up. Now, on this one, I think I have, no, it's not bad. You can see the tips of that white are just a little thin there. The red's a little longer on that one. But this is for demonstration purposes. So now I have my slip for the right side of the tail. I'm going to hold that in my hand, picking up my slip for the left. And I'm going to match the tips up, hold them in my left hand. And then when I massage these a little bit, I make certain the tips are the same length. And lastly, I would make certain that they're both the same width. So I'll want to make certain that I have the same white and red on each side. And overall, I have the same number of barbs on my left slip as I do my right. If not, I can cull some of those out. But this is a pretty good example right here. Still have my right sides a little bit longer. You can wet your fingers like this and often just slide those around a little bit. Just be gentle with them when you're handling them. And generally, you're not going to run into any problems. So there is how I set up a goose shoulder tail. Now, this is wider than I would normally use because of the fact that I just want you to be able to see it. So that's why uh, I got more white and red in there than I normally would, unless it was a really, really big fly and a big profile I wanted. But there you go. So there is a goose shoulder tail. And it's that simple to marry these up and then match them. The marrying is the two colors getting zipped up. You're marrying these barbs together from different feathers. And then matching them is matching the concave sides and the tips to actually make the tail. Now, I'll show you the same process for the goose quills here to make a wing. Again, I don't have this one taped together. I certainly could do that. I was busy with some other things and some other flies uh, and actually do, doing the video for the ibis and white, and I just didn't tape that together. What you want to do is the same thing. We're going to cut my wing. Overall wing is going to be half red and half white. So I'm going to cut that much on the left side, that much on the right side. Now, I had mentioned that sometimes your feathers, you know, they, they split on you like this. If you're having a hard time getting those zipped up or say you have one or two that got twisted down in here, you can steam these. And I mentioned in the extra video I did on peacock curl, and I showed the steamer and everything. You could use that or you could use a, uh, some boiling water, but um, the steam off of it. But you can steam these and then gently stroke those to get those back together. I have also heard of people using an iron. So taking a nice hot iron, with a cloth over it and a little bit of steam, they can iron those out and get any uh, discrepancies, any holes and things all fixed up on those. But for the white, I've got my right and my left. For the red, I'm going to do the same thing. I cut out the red that's going to go on top, and I cut out the right side right there. Here again, it's important that you are aware of your orientation of your feathers. I have the shiny side facing me. And when you're working with the right or left side slip, I should say, for your wings, 
you want to make certain you're working with the same side of the feather that you're going to marry them up. So I'm going to take the white off first here, and then the left side of the red I'm going to put on top. Then I'll come back and I'll do the white on the right and the red on the right. Peeling this off, my fingers are usually going to be halfway down the slip because then when I put this on top and matching those tips up, I'm not worried about the bottom end. I'm worried about the top end. The bottom end here will take care of itself. I want the top end, which I didn't quite get right. I want the short end of that to be right the same length as the white. So I can unzip that, reorient it like that, and then just gently massage that back and forth a little bit and get, I like to call it Velcro, that goose Velcro all zipped back up. Now, as you can see, if this is on top of the fly, I have the slip for the right side of my wing. I'll set that down here. Now I'm going to flip this over because I want to work with this in my left hand. Again, taking that slip out about the middle of it, I'm holding it there. And then when I set this down, I make certain I set it down so the shiny side is up. That way I know the orientation of that feather. I take the red, flip it over, I match up the tip, and then you squeeze these barbs off of that um, feather and pull them off. You're not going to touch it and zip those up and have the, the, the zipped up barbs actually pull it off the others. You're going to hold on to it, and then you can open it up a little bit and zip it up. You want to make certain, again, my tips are nice and matching right there. Now I have the left side. Now I have the left side of my wing. Again, holding that in my hand here, I pick up the other one. The right side is going to flare out that way. I take the left side, I put it on top, I match up the tips like that. Now I have my wing is complete. I want to make certain that these tips are even. They're off a little bit. Even those up, and then I'm going to double check that I have the same amount. I have a little bit more um, white in here than I do red, so you can peel that out. And I also want to check the overall width to make certain that it's the right width for the fly that I'm tying. But right there is my matched and married wing for the ibis and white. So keep in mind, the most important thing here is that your feathers have an orientation to them, especially the flight feathers and even the goose feathers, where the barbules will zip up or connect and reconnect with uh, barbs from other feathers as long as it's the right side, um, the correct side. Let's put it that way. If I were to cut some out here and try to match those up with some from this side, they just won't go together. Which is a good indication because if you're, if you're, and this is common with a lot of people when they're first starting these kinds of flies, they are so focused on it, they forget the orientation of their feathers or whatnot, and they may pull this off here and then flip this over and try to match it, and they'll pull it off, and when they have them together, they just can't get them zipped up. That's your first sign. You got them from the wrong sides. So set them down, start over again. Now, before I conclude here, there is another little quick tip I'll pass on to you. And that is, if you're looking for some inexpensive goose quills like this to practice on, go out to Hobby Lobby, at least the one by uh, where I live, has these packages of white and then packages of black goose quills. They're not the best in the world. I don't know that there's too many nice long flight feathers like this in them. They're probably seconds and thirds but they're good enough to practice with. They're inexpensive. You can get a bag of about, I think, 15 of them for like five bucks. You know, they're really, really simple to 
work on these techniques with, learn how to match these up, how they zip back up and how they, they match and everything else and make mistakes with. And then you can just throw the slips away if they don't work or tie them into a fly if you want to. But it gives you something to practice with. It's not as expensive as some of the uh, better quality goose quills. So that's it for this video. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, uh, as always, let me know down in the comments down below or you can email me. That's fine too. Anybody else has any tips, any suggestions on easy ways to marry up goose shoulder or goose quills or even duck and manage all of this, by all means, let me know in the comments down below. Just remember, it's fly tying. You're not having fun. You're doing it wrong. <laughs>